Hi everyone, today we are going to paint bangles that I have set up in my studio. I have it lit nicely and I've already toned my panel very lightly with burnt sienna and the wash is still a little wet and I wanted to work on a wet wash so that works out. I'm just creating rough outlines of the bangles and I'm also giving the background a little bit of context because I need to see that for myself. I will be bringing in the background color into the bangles and I just wanted to see how it played off the burnt sienna and I also wanted to darken the background for myself visually. I mean, I'm going to go and do it later a little bit more, but just to give myself a bit of a basic idea of the background and how it relates to my subject, I made the background a light little bit of phthalo blue and I'm bringing that into the shadows of the bangles. I am starting with the darkest darks of my bangles, so I'm adding the phthalo blue. And this is just pure phthalo blue. I've thinned it lightly with turpentine and I have a little bit of painting medium that I use and I am just going to use that for the darks. I am going in a little bit with Naples Yellow Deep and I'm just going to push that into the Burnt Sienna and into the Thalo Blue. As you can tell, the mixture is just really close in chroma to the burnt sienna that I have established, so I need to go with something darker. I'm going back in with a phthalo blue, and I'm going to really just push and establish my darks. In the beginning stages, what I really recommend doing is to kind of squint. Don't take too much attention to detail. Don't take time for all the details that are there. It can get overwhelming and just give overarching shapes because my bangles are really intricate and I've got a lot of detail on them and it's easy to go and get stuck into every little detail but that's not what I want to do. I want to just give broader shapes and definition to them. Once I've established those I can go in in later stages and add all kinds of details but right now is not the time because I can't really go in and do anything if I don't know how much I need to push the light, I need to push the dark, and if what I've laid down is even right in the first place. Now that I've established some idea of what my darkest darks are and what the basic shapes are, I'm going to go in with a little bit of cadmium yellow and Naples yellow deep and just add a mid-tone. My cadmium yellow is what I'm going to use for the gold, like the actual feeling of gold, I will get through pure cadmium yellow and everything that it mixes with and everything that I dilute it with, for example, the Naples Yellow Deep or even the Thalo Blue or the Burnt Sienna, that's going to be the basis of my shadows. And my highlight, my pure highlight that the gold reflects, that's a very, very light tint of cadmium yellow. I don't use pure white unless I'm going for the most brilliant highlights. I actually mix them a little bit with the cadmium yellow and I make the highlights thin enough if I need to so that it mix with the underlying layers. So what happens when I do this is that I create a hierarchy of brightness and each of my highlights changes according to that hierarchy. There are some highlights that I want to be brighter than others and I can do that. I can create highlights that are different relative to each other. Again, even though I'm adding more color and more detail, I'm just giving broad ideas of what's happening rather than spelling out every little detail. I personally don't want to do that in my paintings, but even if I did, this is not the stage. This is the stage to block in, to give rough ideas. Now 
because my bangles are so intricate, they have shadows near the lights and I'm going in with phthalo blue while the paint is still nice and wet. And I'm going to add in a little bit of that phthalo blue and push it into the wet paint of the background a little bit so it dilutes the blue and it's still a dark shadow but it's not as dark as my darkest darks. The blue that I'm using is a little bit more wet right now, the phthalo blue, and I'm doing that because I'm going to add a little bit more of either Naples Yellow uh, Deep or Cadmium Yellow in there, and I'm just going to fuse it with the remainder of the paint, and that just creates a more blended look that I'm looking for, but it's still got a little bit of choppiness, if that makes any sense. I'm softening the edges, but I'm making sure to keep the darks having a dark heart, <laughs> by which I mean the darks are still dark enough to punch through, which is important because they're not too diffused here. They're not too mid-tone. They are clearly my darks, and I make sure that I don't diffuse so much as well that the remainder yellow around it becomes too much of a muddy green that I can't use again. And I have to rescue by adding more yellow or taking out some of the blue in some way or the other. I'm working in layers and I'm adding details slowly. When I'm working on something that's very detailed and it has a lot of work, it's hard to get everything in one go. And, you know, in the beginning, I sometimes get frustrated with the painting that it's not looking the way that I want it to. But in these stages, it's important to realize that it's going to look okay in the end. Just keep persevering, even though it doesn't exactly look like what you had in mind. I'm going in and adding some titanium white mixed ever so lightly with Naples yellow, just a tinge of it, but I didn't want just a pure white highlight yet. So there we go. And my paint as I add layers also becomes thicker. And the thicker the paint, the more saturated what I put on the canvas. The curve of the bangle that goes towards the background, that's really, really dark from where I'm sitting and looking at my subject. So I'm going in with a phthalo blue and like I always say, your darks and your lights have variation. So my highlights have variation and so do my darks. The background, while it's dark, has got a lot of light that bounces from it and I'm going to show that in there as well. I like taking my brush when I have a lot of paint and I've used it up most of it. I like to go in and use the remainder of the paint on the brush and push my darks or push my lights or push whatever color I need to push. I get a more diffused application and I really like how it looks. It makes good use of the paint. I'm taking a little bit of the yellow and this is Naples yellow and it's fairly thick. I don't know if you can tell. I don't have too much turpentine mixed in it. And I'm gonna go and mix that in with the background. And I'm also varying the pressure as I see how much I want to blend with the background. And just to create a sense of depth and dimension, I'm going to go and give the back of the bangles a little bit more dark, just to make it pop a little bit.
I'm going in with a fine round brush and adding in some detail and defining the way the light hits the bangle better. Your high value tones, like your darkest darks and your lightest lights, they need mid tones and they need each other to create a nice harmonious painting. So here I have the mid tones and the blues are my darkest darks and they really help give definition for the highlights. It doesn't really work if you have just the highlights in there. Really take a look at how the values play with each other. As you can see, my darks have variation even in the foreground. They're not all of the same value and they're not even of the same color. I go and mix in a little bit of the burnt sienna and push that into the gold and into the phthalo blue and that just makes the painting so much more dimensional because no shadow really is just one color and neither is a highlight take a good look at your subject see how color bounces off the subject and see what's the most accurate way of representing that but it's also important to be colorful and playful in your painting so that it doesn't just become a rendition of what you see, but it's a rendition of the beauty of your subject. The highlights I'm placing here are very, very strong. So they're white, pure titanium white. And I'm going to go in with just a little bit of cadmium yellow, undiluted with white. So it's just the cadmium yellow and I'm creating highlights in the dark that are cadmium yellow and not titanium white. It's the context of the surrounding values that make the highlights and the darks have any meaning. Where using titanium white was a good idea for a highlight doesn't necessarily work in a different place and I had to use a different color as a highlight. I'm actually just going to finish up with these highlights and I'm going to go and give the background a little bit of context because I want to see how it plays with the remainder of the painting and I actually just went in with a mix of phthalo blue and cadmium red and a touch of alizarin crimson and as you can see it creates this deep purple which I like but I find that I might go in and change that a little bit because it just seems a little bit flat to me. I'm just going to go around the bangles on the side because I haven't decided 
how I'm going to do them just yet. But I like the context that I have and I like how it's making me see the colors that I've put down already in a new way. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a little bit more highlights because I feel like it's got more light bouncing. I'm going to go and add suggestion of detail. There's a lot of light bouncing off the little intricate, I don't know, filigree work or something like that of the bangles. And I don't really want to give an exact rendition because that's just not my style, but I want to give a suggestion of detail, which I really like because then the audience fills in some of what I'm saying. So I go ahead and do that. Adding a little bit of detail as well with the darks because it just gives the lights a little bit more context like I said. And really observe how the light bounces off your subject. The light here, it's got highlights on both ends so to speak so it's just a matter of seeing what temperature and what value each highlight is and figuring out how to really put that onto the canvas properly I added a little bit of phthalo blue for the darks. And I'm just diluting that a little bit with the paint on the side. Because the bangles are such a bright gold, I'm trying to bring in that sense of that brightness. There's a lot of variation even in that sense of gold, but to really give that feeling of actual gold, I use pure cad yellow here and put it very thickly over the paint that I've already established. It gives this feeling of a warm, shiny, gold. The gold also reflects a lot of reddish values, so I'm going in with a little bit of burnt sienna and just a touch of cadmium red, and I'm going into that with my brush and I'm going into the darks. I'm adding a little bit of cad yellow to the very darkest parts of the bangle. And I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna under the bangle and kind of giving more definition where I can. Some darks and some highlights, some strokes, are going to be very defined and some of them are going to be more fuzzy and really just kind of have these lost edges that blend into your 
background or whatever surrounding paint that you have and I've done the same for the darks and the lights of these bangles. Some parts I want the strokes to be very visible and very strong and other places I want them to be more fused with the background and you can tell that from the way the bangle has definition and the way the details are worked. There are some parts that have left the strokes to be really harsh, so to speak, and in some places I've blended it in with the surrounding paint better. So I'm going to go to the bottom and where the bangles are resting, I'm going to give that surface a little bit of definition so I can see how that too plays with the background and with the bangles themselves. Actually just going in with a little bit of burnt sienna. It's not really that diluted, but I have some medium in there so it flows nicely. It's not super thick, but it is a strong dose of burnt sienna. And I'm bringing in a little bit of the yellow and the burnt sienna into the lower bangle. And I'm doing the same thing as I did in the bangle on the top. I'm establishing my shapes and I'm adding in something of a mid-tone, but I'll go in with a darker phthalo blue later so that I can establish my darks. I'm going in with a mix of cadmium yellow and titanium white and sometimes if I want to lower the yellow of the cadmium yellow and to make it a little bit more of a duller gold I add in some of the Naples yellow but right now this one it's just the cadmium yellow and titanium white. And I'm paying attention to the way the bangle bends. It's got all these grooves and patterns on it and I'm trying to mimic that on my canvas except I'm trying to follow with my paintbrush how those patterns bend according to the shape of the bangle. So I'm really trying not to make them too flat or too straight but to make the patterns follow the curve of the object that I'm painting. It's important to train your eye to communicate what you see rather than what you think you see. Very often, people get caught up in, oh, this is a can, or this is a cup, or this is a bangle, and they paint what they think they see. It's really important to observe and to show that observation in your painting. So if your bangle is curving like it is over here, try and follow the curve with your paintbrush and really look at the curve that it's making. I'm darkening things up with some phthalo blue and it looks a little crazy and really, really intensely dark right now, but once I actually push that into the surrounding paint, it's gonna look fine and it'll look a little bit more toned down and not so stark. The phthalo blue, when mixed with the yellows, it does make a slightly greenish tinge to the gold, but I want that just because there's a lot of reddish tinge to the burnt sienna and I want to play with a sense of contrast in my painting.
So now I'm going to add a little bit of golds to this and I'm going to go in with some Naples Yellow Deep. And it really helps that I'm working wet on wet because I can push the paints together, I can meld them together, or I can make them stand alone and really pop. It just all depends on how I apply it and how much medium or turpentine I thin the paint with. And these are my beginning layers and the paint itself is rather thin. I've diluted it a lot. I used some turpentine and a little bit of medium and I thinned it so that the paint isn't so thick. If you lay down thick paint in the beginning, it just gets difficult to add more paint and it can look a little bit muddy later on. So I like to work in thin layers in the beginning, let the paint do its thing, push the colors to into each other, and then after that I layer thicker color to make color stand out more. So the lower half of the bangle so these has are a lot of thinner layers that I've so it needs so something to stand out. And I'm going to go in, after I create more mid-tones, I'm going to go in and give it a sense of highlight because right now it's just, it's got way too many mid-tones, it has no definition. And while mid-tones are really important, right now I think I've overdone that. So I'm going in with that same mixture of cad yellow and titanium white. And the Burnt Sienna is really a nice mid-tone to have and it plays well off the warmth of the gold and it gives a nice grounding and deepening of the gold as well. So I think that's a great mid-tone to use for golds in general, Burnt Sienna. And I'm just dragging the mixture of Cadmium Yellow and White into the Burnt Sienna as you can see over here. I'm adding a little bit of phthalo blue just to deepen everything up and pushing some of the color into the canvas. And when you're working wet on wet, the colors can fuse in your paintbrush and I like that. The phthalo blue that I put on is very different than the amount of phthalo blue that I pushed into the wet paint. I like the way the paint changes as I work on there and that's the benefit of working wet on wet. You really can change the tone of the paint. And because I'm working with blues and yellows, it's really easy to get too much of a greenish cast. And that's another benefit of working in layers. Thinner layers in the beginning will give me more of a greenish effect. But now I'm adding thicker paint. And that thicker paint sits so nicely on top of those thin layers that you can see just the color much more defined. There's much more yellow rather than green in the paint that's thicker. and there's also some highlights on the right side of the bangles as well so i'm adding those in and i'm 
I'm gonna go and add some highlights on the left side as well. It's important to have your highlights in your uh, deeper shadows, yes, but it's also important to have good mid-tones. And I started with the mid-tones in the bottom bangle. You can do that if you'd like, but I like to start with dark tones, but, but over here, I mean, it was just something that I chose. I don't know really why I didn't have much rhyme or reason, but I did have to go in and add the deeper tones later because I needed them to be able to gauge where to even put my highlights. And like I said, not all highlights are created equal. I'm going to go in and give the highlights in the middle of the bangle a little bit more of a gold finish. And I'm going in with straight cadmium yellow and I am pushing that. It's fairly thick paint and I'm pushing that on top of the layers that are already there on the canvas. And I'm just going to add a little bit of definition to that vast expanse of gold that just seems to be there without much definition. And I have on my brush a mix of phthalo blue and burnt sienna. For the really, really dark shadows in this painting, I used phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And depending on how dark I want my shadows or how warm I want my shadows, I alternate between the levels of burnt sienna and phthalo blue that I want in the shadows. And I'm doing this because the gold reflects everything. It reflects the cold and the warm light around it. So if I were to just put cold shadows in there, it would just be too one dimensional and it needs something more that is dynamic. You want to try and get a sense of real reflection and real reflection has warm and cool tones to it so that's why depending on what the gold is reflecting I alternate the temperature of the gold I'm going to add in some highlights and depending on the pressure as well of my paintbrush I also get to control how much of the paint I deposit so it's not just the thickness of the brush it's also the pressure and the angle of the brush And I'm going to go and see what I can do to the foreground. And the paint is a little reflective because it does have a lot of medium and turpentine in it. So I apologize for that. But this is just a mix of burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of phthalo blue in there. And I always seem to have a difficult time deciding on a background so I'm going to go in and change the background of this I'm going to make it just a little bit more dynamic it just it feels a little flat so I'm adding some variation to the dark purple that I had in the background so far and this is phthalo blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson and a little bit of titanium white as well and I'm going to push that into the still wet background paint
and I'm going to go and deepen the paint on the right side of the panel. I'm going in and adding even more glue and changing up the background just a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same for the foreground. I'm not too in love with it, so I'm going to go in and add a little bit of lightness. There's some yellow and it's the same yellows that I use throughout for the bangles because I like to repeat my colors but I'm trying to give it a little bit more of a depth it just felt a little bit flat to me and you really can't have any object sitting anywhere without some shadow and this is again Thalo Blue. It's such a fabulous shade. And even the darkest shadows have some variation and some change in intensity and you know temperature of the shadow as well. So I am pushing in some of the deep Thalo Blue into the already put on paint so that I'm changing how dark the shadow is. And I'm going to actually add a little bit of reflective light to the shadows because it's not just so Huge. It's not just like this huge bit of shadow, it is actually broken up a little bit and there seems to be even a little bit of play of light in the shadow as well. So I'm trying to establish that. And to give the foreground even a little bit more interest, I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of alizarin crimson and playing with that. And I'm actually getting tired of that little spot over there that's just undeveloped. So I'm going to go and add two bangles. I had more lying around in my setup, but I just didn't like how it looked. So I'm just going to add two. It's just too close to the edge of the canvas. So I'm going to add two bangles. And this part's a little tricky. I'm going to go in and add a little bit of shadow again with phthalo blue. And I'm just trying to see where the shadow really hits. And then I'm taking pure cad yellow and I'm just pushing that into the burnt sienna and into the phthalo blue. I'm just going to add a little bit of the cad yellow to the second bangle on the right as well. And since it needs some deeper tones, I will go in and add the deeper and lighter tones as well after that because that second bangle just feels a little bit undefined and I'm adding some highlight again this is a little bit of cadmium yellow with a lot of titanium white and I am pushing that into the paint
And here I have a thicker glob of titanium white on my paintbrush so I can create stronger highlights. I added some phthalo blue that gave the second bangle a little bit of context and I'm now going to go in and put some cadmium yellow over there so I can give it that feeling of gold and something to push against the blue. And just to dull the gold a bit, I took the Naples yellow and burnt sienna, mixed them together, and I'm adding a little bit of variation to the yellow gold. And the light bounces off quite a bit on that second bangle, so I'm adding quite a strong highlight over there. The backs of the bangle where it curves into the background, they're rather dark and the background that I have on here is also dark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to darken the background and then I'm going to add lightness and a little bit of gold in there so I can create the illusion of a little bit of gold peeking through from the back ground and it's diluted so it won't really it won't really command so much intention from the viewer but it's going to have just a little bit of a suggestion and that's what I want because I don't want to define everything I have to choose what I want to define and I have to choose what I want to make a little bit of a suggestion so that if you're looking at it you know that it's there but it's not screaming out for attention Again, I apologize for the glare of the wet paint, but I'm going in and I am playing with the shadows that the bangles make. They have all these weird little, amazing little um, shadows, and um, I'm trying to put them into the foreground.
I'm taking a little bit of the cadmium yellow and Naples yellow mixed and I'm creating a sense of the bangle moving backwards and bending in the background. And I'm going to go in and play with the shadows just a little bit. I wasn't too satisfied with it. It's got a little bit more play than I have put down, so I'm just going to go and rework it. I'm actually reworking the foreground a little bit. I'm not too satisfied with it. So I'm just trying to see what works. And I don't think that the red on its own, the burnt sienna on its own with a little bit of red works as well as I would like. So I'm going to see how to fix that. And creating a little bit of dynamic values in the foreground. And adding my name because we are done. I'm writing my name right there, signing it. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and to comment and to like this video as well. And until next time, happy painting.